This video will cover the topic Determining the end behavior and intercepts to graph a polynomial function. In this topic, we will learn how to graph a polynomial function such as x plus 2 squared times x minus 1 by determining the end behavior and the x and y intercepts. What does the end behavior of a function mean? The end behavior of a function is the general appearance of the function when graphed. This is determined by finding both the term of highest degree and its leading coefficient. In the above example, the degree of the polynomial can be computed by multiplying the highest degree term from each binomial. x plus 2 squared can be rewritten as x plus 2 times x plus 2, right? That's right. This allows us to multiply the term of highest degree from each binomial to find the leading term of the polynomial function. x times x times x equals x to the third. And since none of the terms of highest degree have coefficients higher or lower than 1, the leading coefficient must be 1. But how does this help determine the end behavior of our polynomial function? Good question. When a polynomial has an odd degree, its graph will fall on one side and rise on the other, as opposed to even degree functions, which will either rise or fall on both sides. In this example, since the leading coefficient is greater than 0 and the degree of the polynomial, 3, is an odd number, the graph will fall for its left end behavior and rise for its right end behavior. Next, we need to find the intercepts of the graph, right? That's right. The x-intercepts of a function are sometimes called the zeros. Thus, in order to find the zeros, we must set each binomial equal to 0, then solve for x. Solving x plus 2 squared equals 0 yields negative 2 for x, and solving x minus 1 equals 0 yields 1 for x. Therefore, at x equals negative 2 and x equals 1, the graph will at least touch the x-axis. To determine if the function crosses or merely touches the x-axis, we must determine the multiplicity of each x value. Even multiplicity means that the function does not cross the axis at the given point, whereas odd multiplicity means the function does cross the axis at the point. Now we should find the y-intercepts by substituting 0 for x in the polynomial function and setting that function equal to y. Thus, our y-intercept is 0 plus 2 squared times 0 minus 1, which results in an answer of negative 4. Now, do we have all the necessary pieces of information to graph this function? Yes, we do. Let's begin by plotting the intercepts negative 2, 0, 1, 0, and 0, negative 4, keeping in mind the aforementioned general form of the function falling to the left, and rising to the right. Thus, the point negative 2, 0, should resemble a local maximum on the graph, decreasing in value to the left of negative 2, 0. At 1, 0, the graph should be sharply increasing, because we determine that the function both crosses the point, 1, 0, and rises to the right as its end behavior. Plot the third point, at the y-intercept of 0, negative 4. Then click the graph icon. Okay, I think I understand how to determine the end behavior and intercepts to graph a polynomial function. First, I find the end behavior by calculating the degree of the polynomial and the leading coefficient of the polynomial, then determining whether the graph rises or falls to the left or to the right. Next, I set the polynomial function equal to 0 to find the zeros and substitute 0 for x to find the y-intercepts. Lastly, I plot the points along with their predicted behavior and click the graph icon to draw the function. That's right. 